Hey guys, God bless. How's everybody doing? Um, hope everyone's doing well. I pray the Lord will speak through me on this. Um, I'm pretty tired. You probably tell in my voice. Um, it's been, uh, been a long day. Uh, anyway, today's September 11th, and um, I thought it uh, kind of weird. I'm doing this video today on September 11th, the Tower of Babylon. Um, I'm going to be doing a series on Babylon um, until I'm told not to. But anyway, um, I found the study on, on my uh, my hard drive. I forgot I had done it, and the Lord kind of, I think, just put it back in my lap to, to finish it. So I finished part one today, and it's probably going to be a long video. Um, but uh, so settle in or, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> enjoy it. Uh, I just pray the Lord will speak through me in Jesus' name. Um, so September 11th, uh, curious where everyone was. I'll tell you my story real quick before I begin, I guess. Um, I wasn't saved. I was uh, I was actually walking a ranger, army ranger uh, group of students. And we were out in, out in the mountains training. And uh, it was in the morning, of course, and we had just... I had just taken over the area, you know, with my three fellow instructors, and we had 50 guys with us, and we were putting them through the paces out in the mountains, and I uh, uh, heard it all over a transistor radio, uh, which was kind of freaky, but uh, we continued. They called us on the radio, let us know what happened, uh, instead of check if any students had relatives at the Pentagon so, so they could come in and make a phone call. Um, but we continued training. We continued, um, which I thought was kind of strange. We continued to have a normal ranger school day, um, with little sleep and little food. And they continued, uh, the students continued to push through. And, uh, the next day I came in, of course, I saw the whole, whole thing on replay and just, it's, it's just kind of surreal today. Uh, that long ago, 15 years ago. But uh, anyway, if you feel like it, post in the comments uh, where you were um, on what you were doing. So the Tower of Babel, this to me seemed very, very undaunting just because it's so in depth. And so and when I, I, I was a little overwhelmed. I looked at my old study and I was like, well, there's some things that have changed, some things that I've learned and this and that and the other. So um but I started combing through it, putting verses to, to things, uh, re-looking at what I had, and uh, I just I realized the Lord's like, "Hey, do do a series on Babylon. You have it here in front of you. Uh, do it." So, okay. So I've been studying and and reading and putting this together. Okay. So, Tower of Babylon. The backstory is where we're going to begin. Uh, we're going to end with. Um, is America in the Bible as Babylon, which of course it is, but part of my job is to show you how. Anyway, if I were to define Babylon, okay, it's not necessarily a place, it's not necessarily um, a religion, it's not necessarily uh, a country, uh, but it's a system, okay? It's Satan's cryptic, hiddenly, hidden worldly system. And it encompasses everything, <laughs> religion, education, politics, medical, um, the government, uh, the military. All these worldly facets are connected in his system. Uh, this is this his, that his kingdom uses. This is his kingdom's tool. Okay, uh, They communicate and they execute their spiritual plans of darkness in the physical realm through those not of Jesus Christ. And I say those not of Jesus Christ because if you're not with Jesus Christ, you're with the enemy. If you're not completely his, you're with the enemy, and the enemy will use you and can use you. And um, just as God is using us to do these videos and whatever God has you doing, so Satan will use you uh, as well in this system here in some way, shape, or form. Okay? That's how I would put Babylon if someone were to ask my definition. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, in the Hebrew tongue, Abaddon, Greek, Apollyon. Some of this information is going to be regurgitated. Just bear with it. Okay. Uh, like, like the father told me 
this isn't for everybody right now. This is for people who are going to be left as well. So um, I know a lot of people here are awake, but um, this is be for people who are waking up. Um, these plans are uncovered and exposed by the light of Jesus Christ through his followers who have asked to see, okay, who have asked to see using their spiritual eyes and to be led to all truth and understanding. These same followers then expose these plans and of darkness and help others to know the truth and the light. And that's exactly what we're doing on Facebook with our friends, with our family. Uh, I had a talk with my mother today. <laughs> She's asking me why I'm not going to vote. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm trying to explain to her that the country's broken, only repentance can fix it, not a man, not a woman. Anyway, that's what we're supposed to do, and it's a very difficult job. The king here is Satan, the fallen angel who rules over the bottomless pit. They are his people here on earth, the seed of Satan, which most of us know, Genesis 3.15. The wheat and the tares, Matthew 13.24. We're going to talk about that a little bit in depth, because I haven't talked about that in depth in a little while. Okay? Uh, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall sp not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. That's that's the Holy Spirit. He's teaching us all these things. And have no fellowship with them who have unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Um, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for... Um, so we do is make manifest his light. So we are exposing these things. We're showing the world what's going on behind the scenes in this system. These, plan, these plans can be traced and tracked in the word of God. Jesus' holy word exposes their plans. They're all hidden. They're all there. Uh, they might be in the Psalms. They might be in Revelation. They might be in Daniel. But it's all the Bible encompasses all those scriptures and you can put it together because what has been done will be done again and it's recorded in the word of God. John Cleck's favorite verse, what of them that seek, seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark who sees us, who knows us. Turning things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. All their works are done behind the scenes. That's it's the deception. No one sees it. You have to have the eyes me don't know where they are the spiritual eyes to see okay if you don't have the spiritual eyes to see and you're not asking the Lord to know the truth you're not going to see these things okay we do not like to think we were we do not like to think we are in prison here but we are Satan is called the prince of this world this means that he has some authority here he is subject to the king Jesus Christ yes but he is granted this time, and this king will judge him accordingly. He's on a he's on a linear timeline, and he, when his time is up, it's going to be up, and he will be judged accordingly at that time. But Satan took Jesus Christ in the temptation, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory in them. This isn't just, you know, the time for reference that he was there. This is all the kingdoms of the world. Took him out of the time space, gave him a vision, whatever he wanted to call it. I don't know what happened, but somehow Satan showed him all these things. And he said, all these things I will give thee, because they've been his to give, if thou will fall down and worship me. And of course, Jesus knew this wasn't the way. He's not going to worship his own creation. All right, so uh, he, he trusts the Father's plan, and he's like, no, nope, not going to do it. Okay, so everyone always asks. And, and forgive me, I'm going to say it up front here, if this study goes, bounces around a little bit, I apologize. Um, it was a study that I kind of combed through and re-put some things into it. I'm not the best with word, so I had to, you know, like cut and paste and these pictures would get screwed up, so it's kind of a pain. But anyway, just up front, so you know, some things might don't jump around, but it's going to be a little serious, so it'll all work out in the end. Okay, so is America in biblical prophecy? How can it not be in biblical prophecy? Um, it is or was one of the greatest nations on the earth. It has to be in the Bible. But you have to ask and you have to pray and you also have to study and you have to learn and you have to put things together, okay? Um, but most importantly, you need to console with the Lord and pray over these things. And he will what? Lead you to all truth and understanding. 
I can come right out and tell you that America's daughter Babylon in the Bible. And people will refute that. Some will say, no, it's, it's just Babylon, or no, it's, it's not really Babylon. Babylon existed then. You'll get all kinds of answers. From what I've been shown, and in my humble opinion, America is daughter Babylon, which I will explain in the next video mostly, okay? Uh, the references for daughter Babylon are here. Um, in the Forbidden Fruit study, we discussed how kingdoms are brought forth. Okay, we talked about how Cain and Abel represented the two kingdoms, the kingdom of the seed of the woman and the kingdom of Satan, and how they're brought forth through sorrow, pain, anguish, tribulation, which are birthing pains. Cain and Abel represented the two kingdoms. Um, America was brought forth through kind of the same tribulation, kind of the same bloodshed, if you will. Um, but we like to think America was brought forth through God-fearing, loving people. And that's true. They were. They were people that wanted their religious freedom. They were people that wanted to be free of the taxation. Um, but don't forget, don't forget who the prince of the earth of this world really is. And he is timeless. He's an eternal being. Okay, so his people are going to be put in charge. Now, God has his say, okay? But generally speaking, his people will be put in charge. And it's always they've always have been. They've always been in charge. You can go to the founding fathers and you'd be like, no, George Washington was the greatest man that ever lived, and and Thomas Paine, and blah, blah, blah. And I tell you, I encourage you to do your homework on your founding fathers and find out what they actually worshipped. Um, but anyway, um, that's for you to come up with as well, you know. Um, there's always a balance, okay? God will have a balance, but don't forget who runs the world, okay? For lack of better words, the common folk have always had, for the most part, been after the heart of God. Your farmers, your hard workers, your coal miners, um, those people have always been after God, okay? And it's, it's those that are in elevated positions that follow the world and all it's offering, the money, the power, the leadership, uh, they compromise all of their heart of God and they turn towards power of worship, the world, okay, or Satan. Um, but it's it's very few leaders, very few leaders in the government, military, and everything else have a heart for God, okay. Um, and I don't say military because military, they have a, you know, they're hardworking, blue collar folks, you know, um, trying to do the best for their country. So, but it's your people in the suits, essentially, your white collar government officials, okay? They they don't know who Jesus Christ is. They could care less, okay? They're serving themselves and they're serving their, their master, okay? Um, it's their influence, okay? Don't don't misunderstand this. Or, I'm sorry, don't, don't take this to heart right here. It's their influence that has had such a catastrophic impact on how we think and on how we operate. Think about that for a second. You have all the common folk, and then you have these leaders, let's say they're appointed by Satan for the most part, okay? Their influence and their pressures and their agenda has been a very, very catastrophic impact on how we think, operate, okay? We have to stick to the foundation of the Word of God, period, okay? Think about this for a second. 20 years ago, unisex bathrooms would have been unheard of. But over time, and this numbing effect that their influence has put on us, all right, we've compromised. We've compromised. The churches, compromised. Our beliefs, compromised. Our systems, compromised. And we don't challenge this influence. We do. We get mad, we'll post on Facebook, you know, but what good is it really doing? Okay, the elections are fixed, okay? Uh, who we vote for isn't who's gonna be into power, okay? Once again, who runs the world is gonna have who he wants in power, and he's gonna have their influence on us. To the point of you almost can't breathe, you know what I mean? So these bathrooms, for example, or abortion, take whatever it is you want, um, have had this numbing effect. So, okay, so let's just do it this way. 
So you have the abortions, okay? Didn't it start off with like, hey, within the first few weeks you can have abortion or whatever the case. And now it's like they're bringing up post-birth abortions, post-birth up to one year abortions, you know? That's this numbing effect with this influence over time, okay? Over time, that's how that's happened. And it's really just, it's, it's almost just like wearing you down. You know what I mean? It's just wearing you down, okay? We have compromised our foundation. We have compromised our foundation. And who is the foundation? The Word of God, okay? Freedom has a price. It has a foundation. The foundation is the Word of God. With freedom comes responsibility, okay? We've exchanged the foundation for our comfort and for our ease. Have you not read this next scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has come the head of the corner. Who are the builders? Okay. Who are the builders? For another foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You, this, you have to have him as your foundation. The word of God must be your foundation. And that's why when, in, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. When we're growing up and we're learning all these things and um, we compromise the word of God and we have all these freedoms like and we're, we're say we're a Baptist or we're a strong religious church and these people want to go worship um, trees. Yeah, we might say they're idiots and stupid and what have you, but in reality, it's it's their right <laughs> you know what I'm saying so the foundation is gone okay the foundation is gone and when the foundation's gone it's just gonna crumble over time okay and it's been it's when they take the Bibles out of school back in the 60s okay so I mean everything since then has gone slowly down hill all right Gonna look at the wheat and tares. It's in Matthew 13, 24. Okay. I love, love, love this chapter. Um, another pearl he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field, but while the men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the grain sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants and the owner came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? And he says, How does it have tares? And said to them, The enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, do you want us to go and gather them up? He said, no, lest you up and gather the tares, also uproot the wheat with it. So let them both go to red, blow, grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather my, first gather the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them, and then but gather my wheat into the barn. Okay, we are the earth. The, we are the field. We are the wheat of the field. The enemy, of course, is Satan, okay? And the harvest, of course, is the rapture. And you have the tares growing next to the wheat. And the barn is heaven. Okay, so what is a tear? Well, tares were probably called darnell. Okay. Darnell. Typically known as darnell, poison darnell, ryegrass, or cockle. An annual plant that forms uh, part of the Poesy family. Um, has global distribution, okay, purple grain. Darnell usually grows the same production zones as wheat, considered a weed, blah, blah, blah. Referred to as false wheat, okay, so false. If we're wheat, what is that saying? False wheat, false people. Hmm, interesting. Close resemblance to wheat until the ear appears. The wheat will also be brown when ripe when the Darnell is right, it turns black. Interesting. Darnell can be infected, blah, blah, blah. The French word for Darnell is a verrier, which means intoxicated, which expresses the drunken nausea from eating the infected plant, which can be fatal. Drunk. Let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep in the night be drunken are drunken in the night now where's this book in here <laughs> okay 
Um, these Darnell have put us in a state of confusion. Everywhere I go, I hear what is wrong with this country and what is going on. And what's funny, I hear that, right? And I'll say, this is all biblical. This is all supposed to happen. You know, the election's not going to happen. Um, you know, I, I talk to them. I witness to them. But they will, it goes in one ear and right out the other. They want to look everywhere for an answer, but they do not want to look to the Word of God, which has every answer. It's frustrating. What's going on with this country? What's going on? We are in an intoxicated state, which is exactly what the Darnell does to the wheat crop. Darnell, if you have the wheat, which are people, and you have Darnell, what on earth could Darnell really be? What is Satan's seed? Hmm. They resemble us, right? Look like us. But what they have is influence. Their influence. Now, we're not going to get too crazy. If we could get a little crazy, we could talk about clones, Nephilim, and everything else. But I want you to think about Satan has a seed. Satan has a seed. We are this crop. The field is the world. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm making you sick. Turn this thing off. Okay. We are the field. We are the crop. There is a harvest. The angel, Revelation 14, 15, thrust in the sickle, for the earth is ripe. Did you not sow good seed in your field? Why does it have tears? Tears. The enemy has done this. Satan has done this. They grow together until the harvest. While they slept. You see where we're going with this? I keep thinking of that song, Land of Confusion, by, what is it, Phil Collins? Might have to pull up the lyrics to that later. Anyway, therefore... It is the name called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad from the face of the earth. Babel, confusion, Babylonian, Babylonia, um, confound, anoint, fodder, uh, mix. This gets back into the mixing seed, right? The iron, the clay, also the wheat and the tares. Satan seed. Seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15. In thee, O Lord, I do put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thy ear unto me and save me. Be thou a strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given the commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Here's David leaning on the rock, the foundation. Jesus Christ. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every and every evil work. In the whole earth there was a one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found the plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there, and they said, Go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name. Let us, let us make us a name. What's the initials for the United States? Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. What's the goal? The goal is to reach heaven. Only way into heaven is through Jesus Christ. So the goal here is to build their way into heaven. There's only one way. And the Bible is very clear on how to get to heaven. God showed us heavenly things and earthly perspective to give us clarity. Why is the world constantly trying to divide Israel? The promised land. This division is because Israel is symbolic of heaven. To divide it or compromise with sin is the goal of the fallen and those who are part of Babylon. 
So you have the fallen angels, okay, who must work through hosts. We are the host, their seed, their, their hosts. Israel is the promised land, the land of milk and honey, the land that's given to God's people. That's symbolic of heaven. To divide it is to divide heaven. They don't want to be here. They want to go back to heaven. But they need us to get them there. CERN, ring the bell? God will not compromise with sin. For if he did compromise with sin, he'd have to raise those who killed, he killed in Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize. Think about this. Super Bowl 50, Mars Bruno, Bruno Mars, whatever his name is, sings, Locked Out of Heaven. Mars means war. Satan is going to war against God because he's locked out of heaven. Now, hold on, we'll get to that. These fallen want back into heaven, okay, but they need man to do the dirty work or the legwork for them. CERN, all right, to get help from there. All right, consider the following excerpt from a lady named Sparrowbarn as she saw this in her spirit. I saw Adam and Eve have offspring and multiply. From my vantage point, very quickly from the Earth's perspective, several hundred years during this time, I saw these fallen angels trying to find a way to get back to heaven. They wanted to appeal to God. God's ears were not open to their cries. One of the angels, not Satan, governed over the area that had a larger population of the offspring of Eve. The women in this area, Eve's daughters, were beautiful in appearance, kind and joyful. This angel was attracted to one of the daughters of Eve, I saw how beautiful this angel turned. I, I saw this beautiful angel turn his thoughts to more. Every day he watched her. He thought to himself, if God has not allowed us back and we are to roam this earth until the days of God's decisions concerning our fate, then I will take this woman as if she were created from my rib. Then I will become more like them in which the Lord loves. So he gathered up 20 except Satan and said, let us, let us, let's, take these women to be our wives and create our own race, which the Lord might come to love. Then the Lord might be merciful and love both us and the children born unto us. The angels agreed by an oath. This is the oath of curses at Mount Hermon, the fallen angels, the book of Enoch. Another was a builder and architect of structures. This angel had a special, this angel had been special in heaven and his gift was that God had delighted in. This angel erected a building to edify himself and he taught the humans to worship him. Uh, he began the roots of slavery. His, his plan and the others were built temples in honor to themselves where people could travel and worship them. They would also erect tall buildings high enough that they could reach into heaven by teaching these humans the offspring of angels then they could overthrow heaven. They wanted immortal shrines so that the humans could be distracted and go to them to worship, not God. The goal is to get back in heaven. If you read your dream, the goal of the fallen, but not necessarily Satan's goal, is to get back into heaven. Satan's goal is to corrupt mankind and turn them against God. So the objectives, although are not the same, but yet they somehow parallel each other to the ultimate goal, which is corruption. Okay. Um, what does the Lord say about brick and mortar and the tools of a mason? A people that provoke me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice in gardens and burn us incense upon altars of brick. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou wilt not build it out of home stone. For if thou lift up a tool, it shall be polluted. And there thou shalt build an altar unto the Lord God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build, and we talked about iron, all right, in the last video of uh, the Mark of the Beast. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt burn offerings there upon the Lord thy God. And the house, when it was building, was built of stone, made ready for it was brought hither, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. The bricks have fallen down, but we shall be rebuilt, but we shall build with home stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them to cedars. The fallen rebelled and built idols to themselves. Very simple.
This is the Strasbourg in France, which has a very similar look to the Tower of Babel, which is here. Okay, we're going to talk about the creator and the architect. Okay, Masons follow this beam, which they they have. It's, they call him the unnamed of a thousand names. They also call him the great architect, and there's others that they call him. Okay, what's the difference between the creator and the great architect? Well, a creator brings something into existence out of nothing. Hast thou known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, thy Lord, the creator of all the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Architect. Person who designs buildings, and in many cases also supervises construction. So you have the earth, which was created, and then the architect designs things to go on the creation. But he needs a worker to do that. In a second. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven image or molten image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and he put it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. I think this has to do, I might have taken this out of context, but it has to do with, I believe, the tabernacle. I'm not sure. I have to go back to it, but I was looking for craftsman and designer in, in the Bible, and also a builder. And this may not really fit, but this one, I thought, Mason, builder, he's going to construct what the architect designs. God spoke everything into existence. This is the creative power of God, the Father, there is no other. The Spirit moved, he spoke. Let there be light, and there was light. The firmament, the earth brings forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, so the waters bring forth abundantly, among other quotations. Only God can speak things into existence. We already know, we should know by now, Satan can only manipulate. The architect is a designer. He has a plan. He has a staff to assist the plan. He's the supervisor of construction. This word comes from the Greek, meaning chief builder. Mason is the craftsman who lays the bricks to construct the brickwork, lays the combination of stones. Builder follows the direct guidelines of the architect. At this point, we have the creation, which is spoken into existence, perfect good and balance. Let me bring up something right here for a while I'm thinking about it. Adam and Eve, Adam was a tiller of the earth. Um, they dwelt in the garden, okay? We know that Cain went off to a city, okay? So a city had to already be, you know, towns already had to be kind of existent. Notice that destruction mostly comes to cities, that it doesn't come to farmland. Yeah, you do have famine, okay? But I find it very strange that cities are a theme here. You know what I'm saying? These cities are a theme of debauchery. Um, so anyway, I want to just kind of highlight that. At this point, we have a creation spoken existence, chief, chief designer who plans. I'm sorry. Then on top of that, we have the chief designer who plans to build on top of this creation by using his own thoughts, own designs, and they're executed and delivered by his builders and masons. So this guy has a plan to put on what this guy made, and he has these slaves to do it. So I'm going to show you some things here, okay? This is Washington, D.C., and some of you might have seen this. If you look real close, this is just the city. It's from Google Earth, right here, Google Earth. But what you have is a clown, and if you look over here where it's traced, you can look over here and see the nose. You have the eye, you have this eye. Remember Satan's right eye was utterly darkened. This one's real small. Okay, then you have this big, huge eye of Arlington Cemetery right there. And you have this um, body, I guess, for lack of better words, through here. And you have this arm coming up with this ball, all right, which is a seed right here. And uh, there's Hundreds and thousands of these. Okay, I picked three. But uh, then you have, of course, here is mouth. And this is why, okay, when you want to build something, you have to have a permit. You have to pay.
pay all these penalties. You have to pay all these fees. You have to, you want to put a fence in your yard. What do you got? You got to get all this crap done, right? Just to put a fence in your yard or to put an addition on your house. But this is what the seed of Satan does. They work together and, you know, I don't, I'm sure it's unbeknownst to them, just like it's unbeknownst to us sometimes when the Holy Spirit's doing things through us. But this is what they're doing. This is how they communicate. This is Mecca, another clown. All right, the clown is the Illuminati. It's the joke. It's, it's this is a this is a matrix. This is a you know this is all just a big joke essentially. Anyway, some people say this looks like more like an elephant. Well, you can say it looks like an elephant uh, from Ganesh, you know, Hindu. But this is Mecca here, the giant nose of this clown. All right, with a little hat and a little flag up here, this white building's up here. You know, this is all pre-planned stuff. Here you have what looks like a joker. This one's literally hard to see. He's looking to the, his right side. You have a big nose. You have an eye right here. There's a little joker hat and the little tassels that come off through here. Another little tassel over here. And it looks like his mouth is open down here and he's shouting something. You can see a little bit over here, tassel, little tassel, little tassel down here, uh, his little suit, the little ruffles in his suit. But anyway, this, like I said, small examples. You can look at DC, you can look at London, you can look at, um, I think, Estonia, um, I mean, Moscow, all these places have these things. Not necessarily all clowns, but there's there's other biblical things that are that are mapped out. All right, we'll stop there for now. We'll start with this on the next video. God bless you guys. Good night.